the time immemorial. The human belief in the metaphysical sometimes deprive their sensory to analyze the reality of their situation. For example, a person believes that being without good character have no consequential damages to their good fortune in life so far they have been fortified by the Supreme God. At times, because of the power of the mind which is otherwise known as faith, Dunia, which is otherwise also known as the universe, obeys this law and work things out for them. But the sustenance of these good fortunes are totally dependent on good character. but instead be of good character because there is no greater deity than a man's character like the divination of beauty the child of an antelope she consulted on how to live a good life a life so irresistible for both old and young she was told that case requires no sacrifice or rights just so are to be of good character because a good character is the beauty of man. Character can mislead a person. Character can turn a desert into a beautiful city. A good character is truly the beauty of man. So, oh, we welcome everybody to the program today, and I hope that you have left one or two things in the voice that we just played. Uh, we try to address how people want to replace good character with sacrifice, and also in their own magnitude of being smart, they want to boycott processes. A good person naturally attracts favor, good experiences, and what I will call good return or repercussion. And the more of the good investment you put in the universe, the more of greatness and goodness you also receive back. But from my experience in practicing African spirituality, a lot of bad folks want to make good returns. And it is also very unfortunate that there are folks who practice a pseudo-African spirituality who believe that using Isheshe to back up evil is the essence of African spirituality. For example, a person went to internet fraudulent activities, a person who wants to obtain by force another person's spouse, a person who wants to use a kind of hypnotism to take over another person's property and void them of their senses, would say that the best way to get all these things that they don't deserve is to engage the power of African spirituality, it's just to be precise, to do all these things. A student who is not studious, a student who is not serious, um, who want to get across in their 
academics. We'll go to Babalawu and say, can you do something for me that could let me, that would make me boycott the protocols and also help me cheat the procedures that is laid down? I would like to mention to you that African spirituality is not to aid illegality and it is not a window to lawlessness. Whatever you sow, you reap. That is the order. And you are given a choice to choose either to do, to sow evil or sow good. The most unfortunate thing for you, if you believe in African spirituality or not, is that there is no heaven or hell waiting for you where you reap the fruit of the so-called labor. You're going to face everything here before you leave. Not everybody will know when the repercussion of your evil act begin to dawn on you. And some might think you escaped it. But you know that you did it. And whatever mess you create on this planet in this episode, we have dealt extensively on how nature purge out people and um, there are reincarnations. You will come clean it up in your next episode. So before you make a step or do anything, in your character, your attitude, your attributes, whatever it is, think very well. Can I chest what I'm giving out? Can I drink of this thing I'm dishing out? The poison I'm about to serve other people, can I take it in? So before you reach out to Babalawu or practitioners of Isheshe or African spirituality, you must, first of all, weigh your conscience. Are you in the right standing? Because those who must come to issue, issue is equity to us. Those who must come to issue must come with a clean hand. Else, whatever evil you send out, it's always coming back to you. That being said, Today we are going to be talking about decoding the mainframe of Africa's spirituality in modern era. A lot of our children are, are lost, so to say. They have gone a while. And some don't even have a clue of what African spirituality is all about. They feel African spirituality is the same thing as juju, voodoo. Uh, let me say something about Juju. Uh, the meaning of juju is a plaything. Can you even see that it's not a scary stuff? The meaning of juju is a plaything, a toy. That's what they call juju. Just like the meaning of paganism has been adulterated. So when they call you pagan, you get scared, you get offended, you are infuriated. So also the meaning of juju has been so they say, I want to go and get juju from some, someone. It's like saying you want to go and get a toy from someone, something you can use to play. Who about about the, the word juju? It's uh, King Leopold, the German guy, King Leopold. And when he was sending his missionaries to Africa, told them, don't teach a black man about the concept of spirituality or God. He already knows. Why? Because he's God. What you should teach him is that his God is in the sky, residing in the cloud. He said to his missionaries, when you meet a black child, do not tell them, don't bother, don't waste your time. An African person, a black child, is a spirit. They are highly spirited. And so even this white, but they know we are, we, the concept of atheism is a counterbalance of the region of the invader they brought. So as an African child, if you subscribe to atheism, you, you waste your time. Because even those who created atheism, they know that it is foreign and alien to you. There was a time I posted something on at Baba Yuba on Instagram and some people were having back and forth argument. And an African American was in support that uh, atheism is not a thing for African. An, an, an African African bet to differ. You see, it's but a thing of shame for you, a black child, to identify yourself as an atheist. 
atheists don't believe in the concept of godship or spirituality. And one of the most confusing set of human beings I have ever met are the Nigerian atheists. The Nigerian atheists. The Nigerian atheists believe that they are spiritual, but they don't believe that there is a spiritual realm. So sometimes I wonder. Are you version? Are you alone? She won. She Android version ni or iOS. Before we move on, please. Eja se ba fun to lele aye. A se ba farala. A se ba fajero. A se ba foro gun le la. A se ba fun on to do ka to do ka. A on to te ka to te. A se ba fun on shiwaju. We point veneration to the ancestors and we ask that they guide us today as we do the work of liberation and freedom and deliverance. Kama fenuko. Kama ya o mari ti wa gbeshe. A se. A Nigerian atheist believe that he is spiritual. But he believes there is no gossip. It is impossible for you as a black child to want to remove yourself from frying pan and dip yourself in fire. When I started out, a lot of people mistake my intention, my intent to be one who, who do not believe in gossip. And I took almost two years to gradually get to where I am right now to be able to tell you what I'm telling you right now because I needed to take people through a process. There was a time when I came out of Christianity, I explained why I came out, the evil I saw there. There was a time my life was all about countermeasuring Nigerian pastors, Nigerian imam, who knows what they are saying is a lie, but yet use the concept of sky god to steal from people. When you go to a certain YouTube channel called Great Man Ayilara, Great Man Ayilara on YouTube, you see catalog of the works and projects I have done so far, analyzing, reanalyzing, using the scripture against those who administer the scripture to free the people from bondage. I had the acquaintances uh, meeting with folks like uh, a certain man, a Yoruba man from Idomila under Djibouti, is in Ukraine. His name is Sunday Adelaja. I met the acquaintance of a certain guy called Ifed Dayo. They also call him Daddy Freeze. We have, we have, you know, one-on-one -on -one stuff. And uh, I weighed their intent towards Nigerians and black child. And I saw that they only want to rebrand the same lie to get their own chunk of wealth, relevance, fame from the people. And so I resigned from their association. I needed to leave. It is possible for anyone who is not a Nigerian to research or know these guys. As a matter of fact, on their platform, you will see my face having interaction with them. So people who knew me then were thinking, okay, this is a messiah for the Christian folks who is going to be talking, um, you know, all those things. Uh, I had my target straight, set straight to free every, every African child. Who want to be free? Remember, in your course of fighting for a black person, you have to use your two ends. One, to fight for him. One, to fight against him. Because in the process of fighting for a black child, the greatest enemy you face is the black child. You are trying to set him free, but is the one holding you back. So you use one hand to fight for him. You use another one hand to defend yourself from him. And so it was a long process. Somebody was asking me that, when are you going to tell us your experience in Christianity and how you came about becoming a Baba Lao today? It is very, very, very uh, strange for a lot of people. I'm taking time to do this background check because I know a lot of you are wondering, where did this guy pop up from? I, I didn't just come to the scene now. Born as a Muslim, named a Sahid, changed my name to Akbayemi because he doesn't resonate with me, as little as I was, refused to take up a baptism name even when I gave my life to the so-called Jesus. And within short time, I took my life back. And something has been leading me to becoming black and be confident in it, African spirituality. Being a Babalawe is not something I had to just uh, bump into. We have this Ifa in my ancestry. So I needed to wage war with these men. Who calls out the folks like Adeboye, 
Oyedepo, Suleiman, that they are liars. And I needed to tell them also that you are a greater liar than these people. These are folks who said we are reformers. We want to set Nigerians and Africans free. From the group of folks like Kenneth Copeland, from Benson Dawusa, of the whatever memory it may be, from the group of TD Jakes, and they are contemporaries in Nigeria who are having three kilometer by three kilometer, 50,000 capacity, Polynesia, and the rest of the Polar Farasin and the folks. And I'm like, you want to come to Eshu? Eshu is the Holy Spirit. You come with equity. Is your aunt clean? To you and I, we both know that this Jesus that you are trying to rebrand to people is a lie. Why don't you tell them that this is just a lie? Why demonize African spirituality when you know that the basis of a black child's freedom is him embracing his blackness? So a guy reached out to me from France and was asking me, this African spirituality you are pushing and propagating, to what end will it benefit a Nigerian, an African? I said, the moment a black child understands that he is God, he outperforms other races, knowing that there is no miracle coming from outer space, there is no need for you to wait for a divine intervention, that all the intervention you need is just for you to step up to the game and the task and do it. And once an African child knows that nature is keeping watch over him or her, in whatever endeavor, especially in public space and in secret, he will do exactly what he promised to do. So our politicians will be, will be fearful to loot the public treasury because we are not swearing them in with the Bible, which is comprising of is a documentation of lies and the, short, the shortest way to become bipolar. We are not swearing them in with the whole, with the Korean because it's, it's violent. They will see nothing wrong in killing people. They will see nothing wrong in creating terrorism. They will see nothing wrong in shedding blood if we swear them in with Korean. They will see nothing wrong in lying and taking all the percentage of money of people if we swear them in with Bible. They would absolutely see nothing wrong in wrecking havoc on this planet, hoping that they will get to heaven and escape it. They will not be using the concept of purgatory to, to deal with the general populace. When we swear them in with Shango, they know that when they do something naughty, there's a striking of thunder, either on them or their household. If we swear them in with Ogun, they know that if they, put, if they enter a car, they could die a miserable death. If we tell to them in with Oya, Yemoja, Oshun, they know that as long as they drink water and use it to bath, water in their body will begin to misbehave against them. Until we go back to basis of our local politics and our traditional way of running our society, there will be nothing but cheating, corruption, backwardness, myopism in the politics of African people. And until we get to that basis where a black child embrace his own spirituality, it will forever be in competition with his slave masters. And you cannot know the game of swimming like a fish. You are human. Suddenly you are asked to create a kingdom in the, in the marine world. You cannot outsmart a fish. That's the way you cannot outsmart your slave master. There is no way you can govern African nation with Europeanized method and succeed. No way. So competition is eliminated. And the guy said, yeah, that makes sense. And I said, I fight for only one thing. I fight for a situation where all black child will find pride in being black. And none of them will ever again be ashamed of being part of the element of nature. A day where a black woman, a black man, will be at the center stage of the world, occupying its right place and being respected being dread as he or she ought to be. 
and that starts from sensitization and nobody speaks the truth about your identity to you in secret and so i needed to lose acquaintances i needed to lose friends i needed to lose business connects i needed to lose companionship i needed to lose family member to be where i am today you cannot practice african spirituality passively or come in back but me wa no we have to know what you stand for and so taking my time to strategize how best to deliver this message to people. Because I know a good message not well presented or not rightly given is still going to be offensive. And the forfeit of the message, the message, the purpose of the message will be forfeited. African spirituality, embracing paganism. First, why? Should we embrace paganism? Is paganism bad? I'm going to give you definition of paganism in two ways. In the ancient Greece, Rome and all these stratagem of the world, They knew nothing like Jesus. They have different kind of gods. Human beings who have become gods. The ancient Greeks, they have name for everything and God for everything. They have the God of sex, God of fertility, God of sun, God of rain. God of spoon, God of rice, everything of their gods. They believe something must be responsible for all these physical manifestations. And so every single spot you look at, there is a God erected for a certain purpose. And I'm going to tell you why that is. There are people who have dedicated their lives to study all these things and make it simple for others. And the concept of Godship it does not come out of desire to worship something. It comes out of realization and understanding of nature and how it works. I do a lot of mysterious stuff with water. I understand the temperament of water. I know how to heal with water. I know how to see with water. I know how to divine with water. Imagine I'm the first person who understands this. And one day I died. The people who come after me will now call me the God of water. Why? I am not the God of water because I was the one who made water. I am the God of water because I'm the one who understands how water works. Just like we accord the respect of electricity to, is it, Thomas Edison? So also. So there are people who have given their mind and dedicated their lives to a certain cause to understand how the universe and nature works. How the universe and nature works. Please, if you can hear me, let me know. Somebody is complaining that there's no sound. How is that? Hold on, let me cross check. All right, so I can hear myself. You have to fix your... So they created and erect so many images of these people who, are, who we call scientists, who are explorers, who discover these things. Even though if it is a false and lie, we acclimatize the discovery of America to Columbus today. America has been in existence before Columbus stumble on it but because it was columbus that made the place called america popular we now call columbus the discoverer of america in those ancient world they will call columbus the god of america do you get the concept of godship that's how gods are created are you with me the same thing for shango 
Fogun, Fogoya. I'm going to make life simple for you. I've taught you about who we call Erumole. Erumole, Onile, they are the ancestors. They are human beings just like you and I. One day we'll deal with who are the Orishas. Shango is a very temperamental person. But like people who still hold the reins today and make the reins today, Shango understand how to concentrate the atmosphere and the atmosphere in such a way that there will be thundering and there is a thundering, the cloud showers rain. And so we call Shango the god of thunder. Not because Shango is the creator of thunder, but because Shango is the first person we knew in our own race here to have discovered how to make it rain and how to make thunder come. And so in the days of famine, when there is no rain, we reach out to the power that works for Shango. We are not reaching out to Shango, Egbomi. Understanding or decoding the mainframe of Africa's spirituality in modern era. We are not calling a dead man who is Shango to come to our aid. We are enacting and activating the power that Shango used in those days to come to our aid. And as someone who is filled with utmost purity, he also discovered a way where if someone is stealing from another person, Shango discovered a way where we can catch a thief before Ayelela did it. <laughs> there are a lot of people who mistake my name for Ayelela. My name is Ayilara. You know the normal common, uh, the popular Ayilara street in Suhuliri. But some people who don't know, they say Ayelela. So Shango will tell people, whoever stole from this camp, this village, let the thunder strike them dead. And because they understand the power of words, those things happen. It still happens to you today. When you steal from someone, Babaloli, if you need Shango, if we call you Shango to the, the power of the energy of Shango to the sin, even if it is the dry season, the thunder will strike, there is an element of nature, some mystical element that will bring that will bring the stealing, the stealer, some, some, the thief from their bedroom or whatever they are hiding, put them on the street, whatever they stole, put it on their chest. They are dead though. Imagine swearing in your local government chairman, your councillor, your president, your senators, your governors, your speakers into offices with that particular energy. They already know that when they steal from and loot public treasury, death, are with them no forgiveness death straight away so they would rather venerate the god that gives forgiveness to thieves the one that tells thieves to meet him in his kingdom the kingdom of thieves the one that tells people if you kill and you will now give your life to christ you will enter heaven the person you killed that did give his life to christ will go to hell the god of injustice Are you with me? Now, people like this who live their life using this method and this way. They are called pagans. Why? Because they approach life, they approach everything according to their local ways what they inherited from their ancestors. Those who embrace life according to the discoveries of their ancestors are called pagans. So I am a pagan and I'm proud to be one. If you steal from me to clean the atmosphere and nature of your kind, I will enact the power of Shongo or Ailela to see to the root cause of that matter. 
you are scared of me because you are a thief. You are scared of me because your hands are not clean. You fear me because you are bad and evil. And in response to my holiness as a pagan, you call me demonic, trying to blackmail me emotionally. Why? Because you are filled with inferiority complex and you are not yet embracing the totalitarian principle of the universe that you, you reap what you sow. So, if you are wrong, if you are wrong, if you are wrong, you are an armed robber. And I protect myself against you such that when you want to shoot me, the bullet sound or land on you. You want to steal from me. You want to kill me first, but you died instead of me. So you call me demonic. Whereas what we were doing is we were playing. You think you are wise. I want to tell you I'm filled with wisdom. So we play with our divinity. They call it juju. Your divinity says there is grace abounding. When you kill others, you will not die, but live to declare the works of God. My divinity say, he who kill should die. We are playing with our divinity. So they call it juju. You see it as something scary. But you did not consider your own way of life as hurting me and my existence. You want me to fold my hands. So when you slap me in this cheek, I will turn the other one. No, go and meet your Jesus. Not me. You try it, you die. As a matter of fact, you are thinking about it, you die. It has been named Madarikon. No? Madarikon is a kind of vaccine we do for people. While you are thinking of hurting me, you are, you are drying up immediately. Madarikon, young people. While you are gathering somewhere, thinking of evil against me, Emide Nima Agbele Pota Agbele Pota Mi Wang Pai, and if you are you and you are you will now say I'm demonic, but you will never bring your own act in darkness into the limelight that you are trying to hurt me. And the parable of the gazelle and lion will always stand as long as the planet remains. The gazelle lived every day to eat so it can survive. But the existence of gazelle is a food to the lion. If the lion say, no, I'm going to turn the other cheek, the lion will die of hunger. If the gazelle say, I'm going to just stay in my corner and not come out today, the gazelle will die of hunger. Two of them are doing what we call juju. May the best one win. So every single day, the lion chases the gazelle. And every single day, the gazelle must find his or her own food from running from the lion. It's the survival of the fittest. But you want me to fold my hands. It is unfortunate for you that the new set of black children are awoken never to be put to sleep again. So while growing up, they put all these Ajesara called vaccines in us. Living with the mentality that you must not hurt your brother and whatever you sow, you reap. Now we do not leave judgment to afterlife because that is corruption. Ajay leni kpori mi ni bi igbirara la rake wole igbirara. Ele bologun ni kpori mi ni bi igbirara la rake wole igbirara. Toba wa unu wo kolo josho le, kolo jaje le, kolo jele bologun. Mi isha aso kwe iya lagba ja oma lagba ja. No, I'm just saying whoever, but I don't pray for you to be the ever.
So that was how we are able to maintain sanity in our Asian society. Where those who come to equity issue comes with a pure hand. So you are alive because oh, knowing that we do not trust you alone to do what is right, we also put measure in place. That's paganism. Do you think something is wrong with that? Do you think something is wrong with that? If you think something is wrong with that way of life, then you are evil. One of those who are looking for a way to abscond from the repercussion of your own action. Paganism is embracing you as God according to the discovery of your ancestors. Paganism is eliminating the concept of a sky god who waits for people to die before saying, I am God. Paganism is you stepping into the responsibility of becoming the God, the God of justice, the God of mercy, the God, the provider. Paganism is you giving food to those who are hungry, shelter to those who are homeless, clothes for those who are Paganism is you also making out the right kind of judgment and justice to those who do evil and taking away those bad fools from your camp. Using the languages of nature. Should we embrace paganism or not? Or you think we still going to have the best kind of society in a world where we leave everything for the sky god who is not there to undo. Paganism is understanding that everything in nature speaks. They have blood in them. They have their own language. And they are, they are useful. Paganism is speaking to the tree before cutting it down. And explaining yourself to the tree the reason why you need to cut it down. Not because you feel so, but because it is of necessity. When you give me a chicken to kill, every single time we do this thing. You will not find me killing a chicken without conscience. Even though you feel it is of less consequence to your society. So there are words I speak to the chicken. I'm not killing you without justice. I'm killing you because I have seen that you can help speak a better language to a nature that I cannot. And I need your blood. Fish they respect each other's hierarchy. They don't kill the same species. Have you? Have you seen Titus eating Titus? No, it will always be shark eating another lesser. So also human beings are not meant to kill each other. Paganism does not involve human ritual. The people on the other side, those who practice the religion of the invaders, either they are the reformers or they are the religious leaders, they have something in common and that is the justification of the death of another fellow human being. So they call it salvation. Salvation you needed to obtain through the death of another person has also condemned you to death. We don't do that in paganism. I'm talking about the true paganism, not pseudo-paganism. I'm not talking about those folks who practice kidnapping and all that. And I'm saying that those who do it also have detected the life, how they will end their life up. So paganism is not us saying, go and bring the head of another person, go and spill the blood because in the order of nature it is not so we believe there is much space you can explore you can exist you can you can you can manifest you can become the fullest of yourself there is freedom in african spirituality and in paganism so i don't go about cutting down trees i don't go cutting down trees because i feel so a tree might be a danger to me 
Even so, I have to speak to the tree, and the tree have to give me the audacity and the approval to, keep, to, keep, to, to cut down. Now, when we speak to tree, as those who practice African spirituality, they either call us mad or demonic. They don't know the way of life. We know and we respect other elements of nature who coexist in this planet, like us. So I want to kill a dog, Pepe Ye. I will be a lack of crow to the neck of a dog. We now kill the dog from the okra. Now, when you go to China, they have a dog meat and all of those things. They kill those things unjustly. Nature wonder where all these nasty diseases come from there. We respect nature. And we know the right words to say to them so that they don't spill over without control to affect us later. Paganism is understanding that a mango tree is healing. A mango leaf is healing. A mango fruit is healing. A mango root is healing. The sand that surrounds the mango is healing on its own. And we speak to them to activate them. We don't call on the blood of another human being to cover ourselves as a way to escape and secure ourselves. Insurance you get from spilling the blood of your own fellow species is not an insurance at all. And I'm not saying this to mock them. Christians, Muslims, I work for them. I've been with them. I was like them. Now I work for them. It's just unfortunate that when we do these things, they go to church to give praise to Jesus or Allah. But we are so tolerant and accommodating that even if we are the one who give you a solution, using African spirituality, we just want you to be all right. Is that a way of life to be embraced or not? Have we hurt anybody? So people come to me to ask, an educated man like you, what are you doing being a babalao? I said, being a babalao does not stop you from pursuing other career. Because even here we say, on the word, your name is babalao, shegba, shawo. Ki babalao, ma bate. You can be a professional and be a babalao. If you can be a lawyer, a doctor, whatever it is, and be able to recite Psalm 61, Psalm this, Psalm that. Why can't I be a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, a broadcaster, and also be able to recite all the 16 uh, Odu of Ifa? As a matter of fact, it's a shame to you as a, especially Yoruba person, and your children don't know the 16 Odu Ifa, but they know Genesis to Revelation. If you talk to them now, they will say, according to the book of, according to the book of. I was talking to my granduncle, Oluo, just this last week. And we're talking to, we were talking about the foundation of all the Odus. And it was marvel at my discovery. I said, I noticed that the Odus, Okman Ifa, is divided between three Odus. One carries two, the other two carry one one. We have the Ejiobe from the north to the mid belt. We have the Oyeku from the middle belt to the south. We have the Osameji from the west to the east, from the west to the middle, and from the middle to the west, Osameji. So we're trying to break it down, say. The women in our society are so important that they had to reoccur twice in one single world refer as the foundation of the world. So we were talking. My younger cousin is right there. We had just finished a sacrifice for someone. That would do uh, Okonrosa came from. So we have eliminated that bad omen. And I said, Olu, I want you to, because you are way older, 
around 70 or something. I want you to interpret the meaning of this. And he was saying, the importance of women, I want to hear me And I said, in relation to that, what is the consequence, the negative impact, the calamity that befall a man who disrespect a woman, even to the point of battering her, beating her, injuring her? And the Baba, as elderly as he is, shouted, Ah! Ombruko moshu, bulombruko, ombruko moshu. That means the life of that man will be so worse. And we started interpreting it gradually, step by step. I intentionally want to have that conversation because my younger cousins who are way younger, they are there. They are babalaus too. And Baba said something to the benefit of the people who are hearing. Said, that a, a hunter that goes to hunt and get an animal to kill, he did not kill the animal in the forest. He killed it from home. One of my cousins now said, what do you mean, Baba? Said, a man who do not regard his wife or take the blessing of his spouse will suffer for the rest of his life. It might look like you are making it, but is that how much you can make without the blessing of your spouse? Spouse, mother, sisters, daughters, important. I want a rometati dobenu, I want a jelly a year. And we spoke at length on how important women are. I now said, why is it that in African spirituality and in our family backgrounds, as African people, women are deliberately pushed to the back and their importance are not given. Such that men feel like beating their wives, cheating on them, messing their life up, is how to show their energy and strength. And Baba said, That means the religion of the invaders twisted the chain of life brought men up to Kumuelo when they started saying that God, the sky God, created women from the rib of a man. A God so forgetful, a God that suffers so much brain damage and brain loss, he created the animals first and he gave them their partners. But when it, when it got to you, whom he said you are the image of him, he suddenly forgot to give you a woman. He needed to do after thought. As a matter of fact, if you read the book of Genesis chapter 2, you realize that when that your God, remember that, ah, it's not good for a man to be alone. The first thing he did was not to create human, was to bring animals to Adam, your Adam. That's your own forefather. Adam is not my forefather. I don't know who Adam is. He is to bring those animals to Adam and see what he will call them. When he named them and he didn't call them wife, that was when the God now said, what can I do? Okay, let the guy sleep. Let me create another person. He now brought the woman to the man. And the, the man now said, oh, that's a woman. So forgetful. Something is not right. From time immemorial, African spirituality has always created avenue to venerate women. As a matter of fact, the concept of God in African spirituality which they call nature is also called women because nature is all about fertility, reproduction. Would you like to see that? Or like that? I love your Yoruba language. <laughs> it will give you expression to everything you are thinking of. I show shallow do obi lusha or kuni la be la be. They have to be in unison. Women are not after thought in pagan worship or pagan way of life. They have always been the focal point. We men have always been the supporting striker. There is a need for two of us, 
and one cannot do without the other. So the young boys were like, so it is wrong. And it is wrong. Imagine we were taught that way. From whom? Remove the fear of God. Teach these children the reality of life. And you will have the best society. African spirituality provide that. Remove the scare and the fear of hell or the reward of heaven. Heaven is not a reward for being good. Hell is not a repercussion of being bad. Those things are fables. Those things are ways to just tame you like animals. Refuse to be animals. Just face reality of life. Tell these children, male child, you treat a woman right, you get, light, you get right things in life, you treat them bad. Oh, do you fast off more bear? But the Bible told us that women are not permitted to speak in the public. That if a woman have a talk, she should keep it. Go ask her husband for more, and the husband should be her representative. The Bible told us that the desire of the man will be the command of the woman. That the woman will give birth in pain. Who read these things? How do you women even appreciate this injustice? The Korean told us that if a woman is messing up, after denying to eat her food, denying her of sex and all that, you are permitted to also spank her. You embrace those things. Those things are not provided for you in African spirituality. No wonder you don't like African spirituality. Because you will not be able to take advantage of that woman. You don't like things that brings your consequences to you as they ought. You want to postpone your punishment till the end. Right? This is an episode one of embracing paganism. I wonder, how did we now forgo all these beautiful things that bring justice to our world? How do we let go of this social order that is so perfect? I told you once before. Olori ko la ni lafin, olori la ni lafin. Olori lafin la ni, obin lo lori afin. Ke so lori, what's the meaning of olori? What is it? What is the meaning of in that Yoruba word? What does it mean? Olori, what does it mean? Ayabanja yaoba, what is the meaning of olori? Olori la ni lafin until everything changed. That's one way, understanding African spirituality, embracing pagans. Why call it African spirituality? I'd like to set the fact straight that this continent was not called Africa before. It's called Al Kebula. Thank you. Quran chapter 4, verse 34. It's there. If you want to be indignant, you can go and check your Quran and how to treat your wife badly. Al Kebula. And the center of the world is what is now called West Africa, from which are the son of that soil, son of one of us, one of the sons. Now, if you wake up the people of the ancient world and tell them that, what do they know about African spirituality? They will say they don't know anything. Because there was no need to add Africa. Africa is a word that is alien to them. And having to stipulate a type of spirituality is even an insult to spirituality itself. Gone are those days. 
when men and women are so spiritual that they don't need to express their desire and intent with these inferior words, this language, that mere looking at each other, they transmit messages accurately. Come at those days when you have relatives in diaspora who have gone for pilgrimage or gone for business. And you need to speak to them. And all you need to do is to enter into your powerhouse and call the Aori and they appear. You speak to them and they go. And they get the message without mobile phone, WhatsApp, and all that. Gone are those days when men are gods. Where when we say that nobody doubt us, we don't need to now explain. That you don't need to be here before you get it done. That you can get the message anywhere you are. Gone are those days where photo starting system happens. Where your look alike will appear to you wherever you are. Gone are those days where we can infiltrate dreams of our friends, of our family, and speak to them in a dream and see you in real life. And they get the message clearly. Gone are those days where people are not scared of having dreams and they see the time of darkness as a time of revelation. Gone are those days where we don't even need to utter a word. But our children, our wife, our husbands, our spouses, our family, they hear us loud and clear. We just look at each other and what is in my mind is transmitted to you. Gone are those days. Where I wake up and I, and I think of you and you are thinking of me immediately and the next thing is that we see each other. Gone are those days where I sit down and people surround me and I tell them somebody is, looking, is coming to look for me from so-so place and they are getting there in so-so time when they come tell them to wait and they have not told me before that they are coming and they will get there. Gone are those days. But if I do it for you, will you not begin to get scared of yourself? If you begin to manifest it, will they not stone you to death and call you demon or devil? And even you that I do it for, will you not even say I have initiated you into a bad occultic order? Now is the days where we get scared of ourselves as gods. Now is the era where people are so scared of becoming God, who they are, that they will rather push the idea of Godship into the sky. So I was mentioning the, type, the, the, the concept of atheism the other time. I, 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 I want to tell you the truth. The same white man who created Christianity, Islam, and all those things, is the same one who created atheism. If they don't get you in that, they will get you in this. You are still their slave. Sorry, you are defending the idea of an alien as an atheist. They got you. Want to get here? Yeah? Oh, no. If you are not defending the idea of uh, uh, Titus Flavius and the Roman Empire or the Josephus, you are defending the idea of Charles, is it Charles Dawkins or Charles Darwin? You are still a slave to them now. There is God, there is no God. There is God, there is no God. You are, you are a flip flop. What are the tire? Imagine living your life defending what white men created. Ah, I want to cheat. Well, these people have cheated us. I said, there is no God in the sky. There is no God at all. There is no... You are still defending their legacy. And they will do everything to support your foolishness. Yeah. They will do everything it takes. They are willing to push in money to Africa for all this nonsensical Nigerian and American African atheists to have a stable conglomerate and Congress, they were not willing to push in money to sustain African spirituality. So you ask them, what are they scared of? So they push in money for you to forget who you are. They come to us at the back and tell us to in induct them into who you are, you are supposed to be. Oh, T. Rojimbo don't differ. I have a lot of them as friends. So when I sit and speak about African spirituality, you carry my words as a weight of a feather. When my very good friend, Olumuye Osha, Olumuye Osha is uh, a white guy, I think he lives in Florida. If he speaks, 
You listen because he's white. So I said, the day we present Ogun, Shongo, Oya, and the rest as a white Osha, you will begin to be proud of them. Oh, it is Daru. And that he frustrated me, Debe. Somebody was cautioning me that I should not be. Kimama won't let me. But or only Joy let me. I better get it. And you know, I think we will let me because I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And the people you run to, run to us. You will take your time to go and consult a Brazilian babalao, a Cuban babalao, a Venezuelan babalao. Because he's white. Because she's white. So they will come to her DM and ask for solution for you. So if I ask you to bring 30,000 for divination token, you tell me, ah, I won't take you. Or if they tell you to bring uh, $200, $500, you will gladly pay it. Oh, they need Mark Biasheque. Oh, they need Mark Biasheque. Oh, they need Mark So I'm asking what happened to you. Somebody was asking, those things we are capable of doing before, why can't we do it today? This is one of the reasons why we can't do it today. We hate this scheme. This scheme. This caramel chocolate, this melanin, this, this beautiful black skin, this skin that don't crack, this, this, thing, this, thing that, this thing that is born out of the sun. This is why they call you the sons of the sun, the sons of the, the production of the sun. This well-baked skin, you hate it. You hate it. So whatever sense that this skin produces is foolishness to you. And whatever foolishness that that on big skin gives to you is sense to you. So I can go to the bush, cut down a tree that I've spoken to. That I want to create a figurine for you. Because I cannot reach you, I needed to make a figurine so that whatever I put to that figurine affects you immediately, positively. You hate me. You don't like it. But I can tell my friend, Okechuku, to make Mary, Jesus, Nimrod for you with one bag of cement. One bag of cement, and you will bow to one bag of cement. Have you forgotten that it's dangote that does cement? You will bow to cement. Cement. But you call me idol worshiper. Oh, then who I be? I'm refraining myself from cheap beef when. So I'm asking who will help you. Are you with me? I want you to be looking at what is going on. Who did this to you? I don't know. But you are old enough to undo the whatever that has been done to you. Asha aru boy la awa la le. Aru to nu, aru to mi, aru tile, aru ta fefe. Ode mba fa mo ti mba fun. People are giving testimonies. And most importantly, they are at peace with themselves because we put them through that in case this happens next time, this is what we do. We hand over the key of freedom to them. For those who want to learn, for those who want to learn, I say for those who want to learn, those who are patient enough. So here in African spirituality, we understand that we are born of nature. We are not created by God in the sky. We are born of nature, born of the sun, of the air, of the earth, and of water. Everything you use your Jesus to rebook are our own ancestors and fathers. So they dare not attack. Everything that pushes you to lay God in the way, way, sun, God, and the rest are the very things that we call our own plaything. At we want to do, at we want time. African spirituality avail you the greatest gift to conquer fear and to maneuver fear for your confidence. Because the very thing that scares you is the first thing we'll face you with in African spirituality. Darkness and death. <laughs> Darkness and death. 
You must you, you should meet me one day and let's talk about witches and you'll be happy. You'll be happy that you are a witch. So the next time someone calls your mother a witch, you know that they are saying your mother is a powerful person. Go and get her blessing. So the main frame of African spirituality involves everything. It's a totalitarian practice. Calling it African spirituality is even reducing its meaning and the weight. What is spirituality? Spirituality is making easy divinity. It is a method of making divinity accessible by the so-called common man. Because you are not common. To me, you are not common. So I bow to you. Bow to each other. Spirituality in this way of life is demystifying Godship into physicality. So we understand how it works. So nothing happened to us. Everything happened for us. We have a system of divination to tell us what is about to happen in the future and how we can conquer it. Bringing divinity to physicality. That's what we call spirituality. Now all of these methods, you will never be able to learn it in the region of the invaders. You know what they do? They centralize divinity to one particular person who never existed. So Muhammad Rasulullah is the only perfect person. So when they shout Muhammad, you have to say, Salala Ali wa sala. If the guy ever had peace when he was alive, why are you wishing him peace a decade of times ago that he has gone? That means he was peace, it was not peaceful, he had no peace. So the centralized divinity to one Jesus who walked on water, so you will forever be a slave. But in Africa spirituality, you are God. I am God. Everyone is God. However, we borrow from the knowledge of one God to become godly. So we have two types of gods in African spirituality. The active God and the passive God. The active God and the passive God. While you are breathing, you are an active God. When you get recycled, you become passive. <laughs> you know, this is the reason why we don't bow to those things you say we bow to. Say we are bowing to a uh, 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 bow to a re. I, so how do you bow to? How do you bow the greatest of all Orisha to another Orisha? Those are pseudo African spirituality practices. We are not daft, we are not dumb. We don't go to the bush, cut down trees, make a graven image of it, and then come to bow to all. What kind of stupid people do that? Except the Christians. And the Muslim folks who bow to Kaaba and the Christians who bow to a bag of cement made in the image of one Mary and the rest. We don't do that. If you see any of our people doing that, it's because they learned it from these people. And using, Africa, using the region of the invaders method to practice African spirituality is even making you more worse. So the other day I told you the meaning of Atoba Jayema Jayalolo. Ifa Nyangpebe, Ifa is Atoba Jayema Jayalolo. Do you guys not say it in your church? Do you guys not use it to say you are praising God? Your sky God is not Atoba Jaye. Ifa is Atoba Jaye. It means the present help in times of need. And the giver of courage in the place of fear. That is Ifa for you. 
So you guys practically stole, stole every of our expression and words here and give the credit to your sky god who is nowhere. We have a long way to go. Yes. We have a long way to go. So the main frame of African spirituality is divided between simplifying divinity, which you call spirituality, engaging abolism, which you call witchcraft, you call them witch doctors, and deifying the Orisha, the humans. Those three main frames. Simplifying divinity. That's where the Babalao comes. Orumila was a man like you and I, filled with wisdom. So you understand the divine aspect of every area of life. Politics, family, relationship, marriage, business, health, and the rest. If the sun is shining this way, what is the reason behind it? We want to simplify divinity of the sun. If the wind is, if the wind is blowing too much, what if a young person fall ill and they are about to die? What is the mystery behind it? We simplify the moment we are able to decode and simplify the reason why they are to die when they are not supposed to die. We rectify the issue and we sustain them back to life. That's why you call us witch doctors, right? Why? Because you are limited in knowledge and understanding. You can't do that in your own way of life. We can do that, but you say we are bad. You demonize us for helping humanity because we put our mind to knowledge. That's the first phase of African spirituality, simplifying divinity. Then we have abolition. Where we make use of the root, the bark of a tree, the leaf, the fruit, the seed, to heal ourselves. Or sowing, in local jawe, kenika konto jawe. So if you are a Christian and you use Abba medicine, give credit to our sowing, not the blood of Jesus. If you are a Muslim and you use Abba medicine, give credit to our son, not the blood of Jesus. We understand the concept of health. But because we don't do it the way you do, we don't plead the blood of Jesus. And yet we get well. And most times we don't even subject ourselves to surgery by blade and yet we get better and we don't go for IVF even though it's not bad but we are able to recondition the tummy of a woman to conceive and all that we are able to boost sperm cells to be fatter you say we are witches you say we are witch doctor you say we are evil especially because we are able to communicate with the herbs with the root, with the leaf, with the tree, to yield their increase for us and to serve us. So, you didn't understand what I'm saying. You don't understand what I'm saying. But because of your ignorance, a way to cover your own self esteem that is low and to also shield yourself from being categorized as fools. You call me demonic. You say I'm a witch doctor. Why? Because you see something called healing and you say magic. We don't do magic. We don't do magic. We make, we make life happen. We give life back to those who deserve it. So I would rather you come to learn or come to subscribe to your services than you blacklisting us. This way of life, you met it. 
We have been in existence for millions of years before your Jesus came. And the proof of our existence is because of our own living now. Our ancestors reproduced themselves. Where are the children of your Jesus? Where are his family? How can we trace him and those who came after him? All of his apostles. Where can we, where shall we go and find them? Who are their children? Who carries their legacy after them? Where is your Muhammad? Where are his children? Where are people that we can say we test DNA and we, we can say we, the gene of this person is this person? Or the family of Shango, Ogun, or Batala, or Ya, or Ni, the rest of them. They exist. And our lineage never ceased. Never cease to continue. That is the proof of our existence. We have no proof of the existence of your Savior. Ogmati Okowa, Imati Okowa, Oyin Walo Liwa Tidudisin. Onrumila never wrote a book, but we understand his mindset clearly. And the way he made the world go round, we still make it go round here today. The Ghanaian people in Akan, the Akan people, we call it Afa, but we call it Ifa here. They come to learn from our own way, our divination system, to demystify Godship and simplify divinity. That's what they call it spirituality. And we understand the elves. We know the language that the blood of a dog speaks. And so how we kill a dog is different from how we kill a chicken. We know the language of the blood and the feet of a gazelle speaks. Aya bele obiare eni banwa ilosi waju and rapid promotion. Aya kwe nunta fi moshe tutu funwa. She speak in the upstead. Baba be re owe eran owe egbo wa. Ke ishe kwe toli ye bim kwa la wo. But because we want to make supplication for you. So the words we can speak to nature, the other elements of nature can speak on your behalf. We don't kill our fellow human being to go and speak on our behalf. When we spill the blood of our fellow human being, we incur the wrath of nature. And imagine we have not been killing those animals. They would have been much more than us and would have died for the help of our population. So the universe teaches us and the nature taught us how to balance the ecological system. Not to destroy them, to balance them. And the other, which is the last, is deifying of mankind. And we know that When you die, you become deified. According to the ancestors, you came through their lineage. So it is not a concept of a God that sits on the throne in the sky, something unreachable, something beyond grass. We understand who we are, and we understand what we are. And we make it easy for ourselves. This is the part one of uh, embracing pagans. If you have questions, you can start typing it. In a few minutes, I'm getting off here because we have said a lot, even much more than I thought we are going to say. Those who do not understand this way, just like I've explained it to you, they call you pagans. They call you demonic. They call you evil. They tag you, so many barbaric names. They blackmail you emotionally. And they make you get scared and also often ashamed of yourself. You want to bleach your skin so that you can meet up to their standard. Remember, they are the owner of the game. You can't win them. You want to relax your hair so that it can be silky. Your hair was not meant to be silky. You, you, you have a spongy hair. And you begin to speak through your nose without eating the note just to feel among. You see, your life is stressful. 
So you die young. You are confused. You become depressed. You dress like them. You dress like them. And you feel uncomfortable. Your region is hot. But you put on suit and tie and the rest. Like a masquerade coming out in the wrong season. And look at you. They stole your money, stole your hope, sleep with your women, rape your daughters, impregnate them, kill them afterwards, enslave your men, and enrich themselves at your expense. In turn, while you see Shokoto, it's in Belako Shokoto. But you are not willing to check within yourself. What you are looking for in Shokoto is inside your Shokoto. You only need to look within yourself and know who you are. Man, know thyself. The day you stop looking outside of you for the God that you, are, you want to become and start looking inside of you, that day you become truly free. The day your help stops coming from the hill, the day you stop and start, that day you get, people get scared of you. They begin to get scared of you. They begin to get scared of you. Someone is asking questions. Said someone said, if it isn't logical, then it isn't ever. What's your view on this list? Logic reasoning will mean something factual, something you can establish, something that can be tested. It has been tested and approved to be true here or there. Are you with me? So if I say, kill a rat, add it to a cockroach and all that, it will do this and that. That's because I have logically reasoned now. So if it happened then, it should happen now. If it doesn't, then forget about it. If it doesn't, it should forget about it. No, logic reasoning now is not about comparing statement with statement. I hope you will know. The logic reasoning is not, it's not the one that you were miseducated to have believed in Western education. Logic reasoning is ability to test something to be true and true, either in this climate or in other climate. So, so the sun is logical. It shines here and it shines there. Anywhere in the world, the sun will come. It might not be as hot as you should, as you want, but the sun is one. That's logic reasoning. So when we put down the old river and it's telling us to do this and that, then it's not logical. Said that we did something wrong. Or we don't know what we are doing. But if it does, then it's logical. Something tested to be true, proven to be true in all facets of life, in all climate and region. So Ifa is universal. It's a system of divination of knowing the unknown. And it is constant. Another person is saying, what's the difference between a tefa and a shefa? A tefa and a shefa. Why is a tefa more expensive? There are two procedures. There are two steps to become a full babalao. To become a full-fledged babalao. Oko ko shefa no ko to tefa. E yon ba shefa o min po le tefa. Eh? To le tefa. E te ti te ifa. O ya to si shi she ifa. Shi she ifa is you coming to identify. With that divine way of life. It's just like the Christians. You get baptized first before you become a pastor. Hmm? Somebody can say, I born again yesterday and become baptized today. That's cheap. That's fast. It's a first step. It's an enrollment. Hmm? Your admission, your acceptance fee is always lesser than your tuition fee. Have you ever considered that? So the things we needed to do is shefa funyo, to shefa 
for someone who is coming to an FI with that way of life are very little stuff. But lati tefa, lati tefa, all losi bo do, I want to bag bag, I want to do It's a long process. It's an activity of like sometimes more than a week or two. More than a week or two. So there will be drinking, there will be eating, there will be music playing, there will be teaching and all of those things before you have, bec you have become a full-fledged representative of Oromila. That's why that is more expensive. And that's rather done with your, in, with your presence. Ale shefa fun ola ije po wa nbe. Ale tefa fun oto ba si be. Are you with me? Those things are expensive. And we don't induct just any other person into that sacred order. We don't. So you are not going to give your all to defend the wisdom of Monromila. It's better you don't start. Are you with me? Any other question, please? That's why it is more expensive than each other. Your acceptance fee to an admission is deep. It's going to be way lesser than your tuition fee. Uh, so it tefer is the tuition. When you become a graduate, you now become a balawo. A shefa is identification. A sort of baptism done for you. Pulling you out of this corrupt system of, pega of uh, invasion, of invaders, and putting you back into yourself. If you want more information regarding that, you can reach out to me. And for those who long to do IFA consultation, let's check things out and, uh, before we take a step. Before we take a step. Okay? Franklin is saying, when are you coming on my YouTube channel? Very soon. Very soon, my brother. As soon as yesterday, I will grace your channel and we will enlighten your people too. We should make a remember with that immediately. Now I'll talk to you later. All right, thank you very much for joining us today. This is the episode one, the embracing paganism. We'll be bringing more stuff to you, at least once a week. And if there are other questions you want me to address also regarding embracing paganism, please put it in my inbox. Go to the inbox, put it in. And you are free to also browse our website babayoba.org 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 you can view we have knowledge based there where you can update your knowledge about absolutely anything and if you also want to watch the, re the replay of videos especially the ones we have done in the past is on our you can watch it on either our youtube page babayoba on youtube or babayoba.org on the internet directly from your internet and all uh, somebody said, can you speak on, on some, some of the attributes of children of Oya? Mm. Let's take this particular one uh, some other time. We are far, we are far behind schedule. Uh, please put it in my inbox, I will address it. Don't know if it's worth to ask you, but trying to know more about you, understanding your journey. All right, so what else do you want to understand about my journey? Um... Someone has already asked me to explain my journey, how I got here, and uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's not, a, it's not an easy journey. It's the most perilous journey you can ever take in life. You will lose everything. You will lose everything. If you are going for fame, for relevance, don't toll my path. If the accolade of people is what you are looking for, don't even try to trail my path. This path I try to blaze is not for everyone. It's a path that will cost you a spouse, cost you siblings, cost you projects that are big, contracts. It's a path that will cost you friends, close allies. It's a path where you'll be treated like a vermin. It's a path that will see you being treated like feces, like nonsense. It's a path of depression, a path of visible loneliness. 
It's a path where you'll be broke. You'll be broke like MC Yama. If money is what you're looking for, don't tell this path. If it is fame, don't join this path. If what you are looking for is how people will just see you and be licking your feet, go and meet Jesus. If it's a path, if you are looking for a path where people will just put in money in your account without you doing anything for them, or if, it, if it's a path you are looking, if a path you are looking for is a path where you 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 gain luxury by lying, go and meet Muhammad. Go and meet Jesus. This path will not avail you those things. This is a very dangerous path to talk. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm preparing you ahead in case you want to talk. If, if, if you are looking for a path where you sleep 24 hours or 8 hours in the night, don't tell this path. The people you set free, those who are holding them bound will not be looking at you. A lot of people we have worked for. Our family member, I am a later. As in Jaja Kadi. It's not a part where you get married to just ordinary woman. It has to be a woman who understands your journey, who is also spiritual, who is with you all day, all time. If you, if you are looking for a path where you sleep with anybody, any have sex randomly, or even your spouse any time of the day and all the time, don't tell this path. This path will demand your sexuality to refrain even when you are in the mood. This path is not going to make you go celebrate, but it will give you a demand on discipline. If it's a path where you want to relish on going to nightclubbing, drinking to stupor, and eating everything that comes your way, or going to every meeting, this is not a path for you. I'm sorry. If it's a path where you want someone to watch your back all the time, no, you got to watch that back. And not only your back, you watch other people who stand as an angel for other people. It's not a path where you sleep all the time in the night, You'll be awakened, or you will awaken yourself. But it's a path that gives you peace, knowing that you discover yourself. It's a path that puts you in the, in, the, in, the, in the podium of God. A God not to dominate others, a God to serve others. If you are looking for a miracle, this is not the path. If you are looking for magic, this is not the path. If you are looking for a path where you read one book for the rest of your life and condemn other books, this is not the path. In this path, at least my path, not I'm not vouching for other babalawas, my path, you need to read extensively. Extensively about your own tradition, your own culture, other people's tradition, their culture, their way of life. It's not a path where you are limited to because I'm a Yoruba, I only know about Yoruba. You read wider into Kemetic understanding, Akan, anthropologists, and all those things. It's not a path where you have a time to be browsing the internet and be busy watching YouTube or video. It's not a path where you have fun. It's a path where you are to update your knowledge. And like I said before, it's a path that is filled with visible loneliness. People who love you in the secret, they will not be able to identify with you in the public. They will see you in real life and ignore you because they don't want people to know that they know you, a pagan. There's not a part where you receive accolade of people and they welcome you with open hands and say, ah, oti de, oti de, ege, ege, ege. It's not a part where you have protocols waiting for you at the airport, all those things. It's a path where people who you serve with your life and deprive yourself of sleep in the secret in the public they still speak against you and they don't want to be identified with you because you are a filth to them for being who you are the path where people will call you crazy call you mad they will give every proof to blackmail you it's a path of propaganda if what you want is peace of mind forever a life of no sorrow a life where everything is rosy a life of it is well, don't tell this path. It's not going to avail you that. You will never get it. My smile is not born out of a rosy life. It's born out of the fact that I embrace who I am and I chose to sacrifice myself like my ancestors did to serve you and others. I was a Muslim. My father's side, my mother's side, are still Muslims today. 
Imagine staunch Muslims having one silly guy who is a pagan. I'm not the type who goes for family meeting because I'm a field to their gathering. I was a Christian. My adult life, I made so much friends. All my acquaintances, my friends, my business partners, they are all Christians. But today I'm a field to them. And if you want to tell this part and you want to be public about it, Maybe you should do it outside the country. Nigeria is not a place where you have expression to be who you are. You can't get a job being this. You can't, you can't take your CV to any place and be, and be proud to be a pagan. They won't accept you. So to tow this part means you are self-sufficient in terms of your finance. You are a service provider, not an employee of labor. Those are things you should put in place. People are going to come at you with clubs, with daggers, with, she, with, with, with shovel. What they want is to bury you. People will come with you with everything to tell this bad. But if you don't give up, if you don't give up, not give up your ideology, but if you don't give up yourself, you will be a force to be reckoned with. And I giving up. The few of you that know me and we talk together today, I wouldn't have known you. And I believe I'm going to know more people in the future. I don't do this because I want to know people. I do this because I discover myself. And I want you to discover who you are too. But in discovering yourself, you have to divorce who you are and marry who you are, who are supposed to be. You will divorce who you were and marry who you are supposed to be. Who you were were lies. Who you were were feeble creatures. Who is you responsible? Who you were was a vulnerable being who is an addict of either prayer or drugs. You are both high on the same thing. But who you are meant to be is God. The concept of being God. Go to the market square and say, I am God. People will stone you to death. How do you live in a nation where people are scared of being God and you call yourself a God? And this part requires you to own nothing. Own nothing. The solution to people's life is not limited to Ifa. People reach out to me to ask for money. So when I ask you for 30,000 divination token, I'm not asking for myself alone. I ask that your prayer may be answered, maybe peradventure through the life of other people that are used part of your money to also help. This path requires you to clothe those who are naked, even when you are catching cold yourself. So house those who are homeless, even when you have no roof over yourself. This path will require you to, to see people to the theater, to surgery tables, and see them come out. It requires you to follow up every single person that comes your way, to check up on them, and take their burdens as yours and to watch their back. So nothing wrong comes to them. You don't want to be in this path when you cannot be awoken in the, in the middle of the night because someone had a bad dream and they need to talk to you about it. You don't want to be in this path when you are not humanitarian in nature, don't have human relationship and how to deal with people. You don't want to be in this path if you are not a teacher or only like the greatest teacher of wisdom, accommodating and tolerant. You don't want to tell this part if you are self-centered. Because if someone who cross your path have a dick, you share it. They have injury, you share both the pain. That's what you are, Ziba Balao, the custodian of sacred and ancient secrets. To bring people higher to the point where they will know who they are. I've done several things in the past. I'm proud of them. But the moment they don't align with my, main, my brain, I stop them immediately without turning back. And I'm never ashamed to denounce my mistake or to renounce my mistake. I found myself in a place where I don't want to live anymore, being who I am. Ah, thank you very much for those who are clamoring to be Baba Lau and all. Except you want to be a fake one, the pseudo one, who are, do, who, are, who, are, who are fraudsters, who steal from people. 
you are free to do that. Um, you will drive big cars, you will even buy private jets. But remember, if you sow pain, you will reap pain. In this life, not in hell or heaven. No. In this life. Lord Mori Babala o ton kon la shobi akparo. O Mori Babala o ti le 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 ti o ba. O Mori Babala o ti bo everything he help people with is happening to him. O to onu la fin she she she. African spirituality without equity, without coming to equity with plain hand, is going to burn you. Don't get burned. If you are not ready, don't start. If you are ready, that's why I advise some people to get to a certain age where experiences has taught them and they have conquered their greed of wealth, greed for money, before they embrace this way of life. Else, you will kill yourself before you start. Thank you very much for joining today's broadcast. It went way beyond what we intended and way beyond what we wanted. But I'm always glad to tell you everything I know and to make it plain and bear it so pure with you so that what I teach you, you can teach other people too. And don't forget to bring people to the platform. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, Baba Yoba, on YouTube. Check out our website, babayoba.org, babayoba.org. And you can also do well to announce this particular platform, Instagram, at Baba Yoba, at Baba underscore Yoba, to your family and friends. We are also on Facebook, Baba Yoba, at Baba Yoba on Facebook. Anywhere you are, you see a very unique logo, that caricature of me having a bit yaja with the combination of the staff of Oromino, Oromila, and uh, Osoin, and, uh, you know, are you sure I was still elderly? If I blessed you, bless all that. That's what Isheshe is all about. Thank you very much and see you some other time. Awo ni rogbo gun lopo, awo ni shashe danu ni li aye. Odun yi long pari lo awo ni bodun pari. Odun yi lo sopin awo ni lo sopin odun. Aye wa awo ni polu kuru mushu. Awo ni bawe kenyo nje, awo ni jegongo kenyo eran. Awo ni shonku o, ojo ebi ba nkwa li awo ni sinile. Ojo ebi ba nkwa na awo ni jade. Awo ni ba on kusori mo she 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 mo jia mo jia. E yo wane she she ae ni she she biye ni ke mo jia e liri. E o ni baraye for what yo. E o ni kukwa e kwa jow. O maraye o ni so yimole biye ran o. A o ni fe gba funye lo nje jye o ni ya were dan o. O polo nyo o ni joba. E mi nyo o ni shonlo biye mi ya laro. A ye nyo o ni ba jye. E ni titi e ti jono o ni kono mo ti nyo. E o ni shori be e o ni shari fe se si. Ibi ti o ye ke ti shoro, e o ne le nun be, e o ni to ju o nun do ju i kuo, e o ni bo ju a la wa were. Amara yo o ne she nyo kwa, e, bi ku ban ban le, e o jade, bi mbe lo no, e o she a re, e mo ben le. A o mo be o ben in be shu a tele se a ben o we, e nyo lo lu fe e mi e di o mo e kuti kuo bodo kwa lo ni, e do mo anon tan o bodo kwe de, e do mo a she ri, ta she ri kan kan o bodo ri be she, E do mwa anwa a jè, anwa yi a mi a jè, o salan solo solo nsa la. O niri ti yin bè xo, ta bare ni chok bè jò yin ka, ti yin ro jò yin ka a kiri, o gèrè. In la gbe, mwoto kwe lè yin, ki bi o ma a bò ni bi, ke bo ma a bè lè bò, kasa si o ma a bè la sa si, e kò la yin lè, gòro gòdo bà e gò gwè ni ti bà ngwa ti yin, po wò xe yin ni bi, ki yon ma a yin lè. To ni ton wò bà gbò rò, a, ki yon gbò nò lò, ki yon lò li ma wà a diè, to ni ho, e mi ti yin to tò, o di bà kò 